Hi, welcome back to 5-Minute Physics. Uh, today I want to show you how to understand a, a, an amazing fact that I, I first learned uh, from the astrophysicist Tommy Gold when I was in high school and it stayed with me ever since. I hope you find it equally fascinating. It has to do with black holes. First, just recall some stuff we've already done. If you're uh, trying to leave the Earth or another object and you want to calculate the escape velocity, Remember that we looked at the total energy, which was 1 half mv squared minus gmm over r, and we said that if that is greater than or equal to zero, then you'll escape. If the positive piece, due to the energy of motion, was bigger than the negative potential energy, you'd escape. So all you have to do is keep pumping up the velocity until this term is bigger than that term. And when it's exactly equal to zero, that gives you the escape velocity. Any velocity bigger than that will escape. So equating this term to this term, I just get that the escape velocity from any object is 2 gm over r. That, uh, that you already know, I hope, from the past uh, five-minute physics. Now, this fact was used 100 years after Newton by this guy named John Michel, who was a, uh, a British scientist who, who uh, actually was a very good scientist, but he could never get a job at Cambridge. He was educated at Cambridge, and so he had to take a, a consolation position as a clergyman. But nevertheless, he did very good work. And he realized, well, look, if this is the case, and I keep pumping up the mass, eventually the escape velocity will be bigger than light. And he said, maybe there's objects where the escape velocity is bigger than light and not even light can escape. Early version of black, a black hole, what we now call a black hole. Now, this is a classical Newtonian calculation and it has to be modified a little bit in general relativity, but the idea that there could be black holes of approximately this mass came, went back to him in 1784. In fact, what he showed is if you had an object whose mass was 500 times the mass of the sun contained in a radius equal to the mass of the sun, the escape velocity would be bigger than light. So let's take this idea and work on it a little bit more. Let's say, let's set this to equal c squared. The escape velocity equal to c squared. You get that equal to, for some object, 2 gm over r. And that tells you what m and r have to be to make a black hole in this uh, classical approximation. Let me write this a slightly different way. m over r is therefore c squared over 2g. And if you therefore achieve these conditions, that a mass contained in a certain radius r, you'll uh, equal to this, you'll have something whose escape velocity classically is greater than the speed of light. But let's remember what mass is. Let's, what's the mass for a, uniformly, a uniform density object of radius r? Well, we've done this many times. The mass is proportional to the density times r cubed. Well, this implies that, let me write it down, density times r cubed, right, now I'm using big R's instead of little r's, sorry. Um, oh, so I'll use the little r, big R there, is equal to c squared over 2g. But that's, this means that the density to get a black hole is c squ squared over 2g times r squared. This means in order to get, to make something a black hole of radius r, the density you need goes down as the radius increases. It means that as black holes get bigger and bigger and bigger, the density you need to achieve to make a black hole is smaller and smaller and smaller. For example, if you wanted to take something of the current mass of the sun and make it a black hole, you'd just have to achieve a density, well, you, not just, you'd have to compress the sun down to a size of about the size of, uh, of Boston or something like that. And uh, it's, the density of material would be incredibly large. It would be billions of tons per every you know, spoonful of material. That's what you normally think of black holes as being incredibly dense when they form and outrageous. Well, not the case. If I took a, a, uh, an object, say, the size of our galaxy, and asked what would its density have to be if it was the size of our galaxy when it just first became a black hole when light couldn't escape? Well, you work it out. The average density is the density of water. Not too unusual. If you had something, the density of the Earth, basically, or less dense than the Earth even, but continued in, in, to grow in size and keep that density so until it was the size of our galaxy, it would be a black hole. Now, here's the really interesting fact that I learned from Tommy Gold. If you take something the size of our observable universe and ask what would its average density have to be 
before it became a black hole using this kind of analysis. Its average density would have to be less than a factor of two, bigger than the average density of the universe in which we live in. In fact, therefore, our universe could be a black hole. And it's sort of, in, in that case, if you think about it, a closed universe, which closes in on itself and, and um, is in some sense a black hole. But I think that's fascinating that, that uh, black holes are exotic, certainly in movies and literature, but if you uh, create an object that's big enough and make it a black hole, it's not so exotic at all. And um, that's fascinated me ever since. I hope it does for you too. And that's 5-Minute Physics in 5 Minutes. Take care.